Hello there, look at that, nice and clear, now it's looking good, now it's looking good, look at that, now it's looking buff, it's clear, it's nice, hopefully you guys can see and hear me from now, it's episode number 24 of the random show, number 24, hopefully you guys can see and hear me, I'm I'm doing this for a webcam, through my other macbook so hopefully this works because this is a newer one it doesn't have any usb ports so i just had to use this a bit mad and a bit ghetto hopefully it works and it's good let's see and wait and see if anyone has is still up and this is gonna give me a chance to stream again <laughs> oh mate honestly i fucked this up in a big way in a big way but you know what the good thing is whoever watches this now on the replay won't have any idea what happened before because i've privated all of other streams they're all on private no one's ever going to see them ever again so if you saw them congratulations well done to you pat yourself on the back but they're never going to be seen ever again because i am getting you know i'm embarrassed by those streams actually so i do appreciate the constructive criticism and some of the harsh ones i need to get my act together i'm gonna get a streaming laptop anyway very soon and as soon as I get that, I'll start doing this more regularly. But if I can't use this laptop, I'm not going to use any other to stream because it's just not working. If you see my podcast, you would have known that, you know, the recording is always a bit jank anyway. It's a bit stuttery, but it works on there because I'm just talking and showing like links on, on the internet. I'm not exactly playing videos. So that usually works better than what I've got going on at the moment. So hopefully this is not too bad and everything is going okay. Um, I'm just loading up the thing on my phone here. It looks like it's going pretty decent. We've got people coming in little by little. Let's wait for some more people to come in so they can hopefully <laughs> give my man another chance to do this again. But, oh, mate, what a disaster. What an absolute mitigating disaster. But, hey, we start again. Episode 24 of the Random Show. If you're, it's your first time tuning in and you like what you hear, at the end of this, why not? you know smash that like and if you want to come back again and see more stuff about me why not hit that subscribe button and then we can be connected you know way more than we are already now it's up to you though because you know my computer is always jiggly so if you do want to connect with me you're gonna have to put up with some technical difficulties but again like i said it's not gonna last for long i promise i'm not dsp i'm not gonna to lie to you it's gonna get sorted very soon i promise you it's gonna get sorted just give me a moment give me a moment it'll get sorted we got everyone that's coming through now slowly but surely we're filling up um pull up your chairs i've got my apron on already i'm on the grill cutting shit up you know what i mean spraying it with the hot sauce and shit so get get involved man got, got some got some stuff to to get to talk about and to um enjoy for ourselves why not on this fateful day hopefully you guys can see um what did i say what's this comment here <laughs> says uh let's see what's, what's this comment say the haters and tech issues couldn't keep a real you know this you already know you already know they can't keep me down man i'm 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 built strong i mean this is all like fufu and yam and shit i mean built strong out here fam there is no keeping me down when when the stream says no i come back in again you know what i mean come on bro come on no messing around over here. Oh, let me actually re reduce the size of that chat. That looks a bit mad. Uh, what's the size of it at the moment? Can this font settings size is 34? That's a bit mad, and let's do it to 23. What does 23 look like? Bear with me a second. 23 is nice, yeah? 23 is nice. I like 23. Let's do 23. Visual settings. Uh, always on. Clean theme. What's box? What's box look like? I like clean theme. Should I have to keep it clean or should I do it box? Let's see. No, let's do clean. Or let's do, let's try maybe old school. What's old school look like? <clears throat> no, let's, let's do classic. That's crazy. Clean. Nice and clean. Maybe drop it down to 18. Let's do 18. Hopefully that's okay. Does that work good? Maybe that'll work all right. But yeah, big up everyone that's joining in. Um, much love from DC. You're currently keeping me entertaining in the traffic. Okay, awesome, man. Great to hear it. Big up, MN. And Nine Tells Kyle says, Brendan will be at the comedy, what? At the Moon Tower Comedy Festival with Bobby Lee. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course he will be, man. That's going to be interesting, isn't it? That's going to be interesting. What's going to happen there, mate? Oof. 
if that was me, I don't know what I would do, man. I, uh, I don't know if I could put up with such um. Was it this I can't before? Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I don't know if I could. I don't know if I could put up with this. I really don't know if I could put up with this. Um, but yeah, big up everyone that's joined up with this on the little chat. We're gonna go into loads of the videos that I'm wanting to talk about and shift. That was you know I wasn't able to because my thing wasn't working. I'm doing this a bit ghetto still. I'm doing this on a, on a computer that doesn't have a USB um, connector. But, you know, so far it's working okay, I think. I've got the the microphone, the headphones are working pretty decent. Um, and, yeah, here we are, man. Hopefully you can hear me. Yeah, the, the, the microphone sound is pretty decent and nice. Episode number 24 of The Random Show. If you like what you see and hear, make sure you smash that like for me, it. Smash that like for me. Don't delay. Do not delay. So... Let's get started. Um, brother, just roast branded. That's all I care about. Okay, cool. Yeah, no worries, man. Let's get started, man. We're going to run through a couple of things here that I want to talk about. Should we go watch this first? No, let's not watch this first. Let's maybe do... Uh, let's do let's do this again because I just want to have it clipped up so it's nice and cool on my flipping channel when I clip it later. So, as most of you are aware, these young ladies, um, specifically Annie Liederman, um, suggested a while back that a male comedian within the LA space told her that he wanted to take her on a truck walk. And if you don't know what a truck walk is, it's basically a colloquialism for gluck gluck 7,000 towards a car or gluck gluck 7,000 in a car. Um, Annie Liederman being the queen that she is obviously de you know, de denied that man's advances, but it still left a sour taste in her mouth, no pun intended. And she felt like she had to share the story with her sisters on her podcast. And it just happened to be that Lila to her left and to our right who happens to be Bobby Lee's girl also had a story to share about that said gentleman where he allegedly um what you call it text her during I think a New Year's Eve or something to hang out even though he was with his family which is super awful and also at the time it was very public that she was with Bobby Lee so at the time they didn't share any names they didn't say who it was literally if only you're one of us and you're balls deep in this shit you would know who it was but no one would have known who this person was that they were talking about but of course the homeless cats on the fire and the kids subreddit discovered it and they found out that allegedly it could be brendan shorb i'm not sure if it is don't sue me you gargoyle looking motherfucker i'm not too sure if it is you but people are saying that it might be you so the trolling began people started going in on him they started trolling him i'm sure people reached out to his girl which i'm not a fan of i don't believe in getting the kids or his girl or any of his family members involved in this brendan's a public figure leave it all to him but they did that regardless then of course i think just after that if i'm not mistaken that might have coincided no, just after that Brendan then was doing a live stream with Mike Tyson for um, the Super Bowl, I think. And like an idiot, or as unlucky as he is, he got caught on live stream in 4K handing a note to some random girl who looked like she was very happy that somebody like Brendan, who is somewhat famous, was um, into her and gave her a note or whatever it may be. People, of course, clipped that, threw it up on a subreddit. That went crazy again. Then I think that coincided with brendan's wife at the time or miss or whatever you whatever that girl whatever she is to him um she was removing his name on the bio taking it off and deleting his pictures like loads of messy stuff behind the scenes that you could see okay he's def all this is definitely causing some turmoil in his household then eventually it got to a point where i think as per usual she decided to go on a las vegas trip which is usually something that coincides with either him stepping out or him she not being happy with him or i don't know they've got some relationship stuff going on there where it seems like whenever they go through an issue she happens to jump jump on a plane to las vegas hang out with a girl and you know and do what girls do cool whatever it doesn't matter get back to brendan somehow or the other he then decides in that process to go and sue uniques a, a small youtuber other youtubers get pissed off they get angry they start shouting at him and now we're in a situation now where he is allegedly suing the ladies that he tried to hit on which I don't understand. But anyway, let's hear it in their own words. They basically discussed it without naming Brendan Shaw, but basically they're talking about Brendan Shaw. Okay, All right, I actually do want to come out. There's been a lot of stuff about a certain, oh, no. a certain walk and a certain like vehicle, <laughs> to a vehicle. And I want to say the initials are BS, but he did pass away recently in a hotel room, so I don't want to out him. <laughs> <laughs> He, um, 
down. Yes, it was a comedian with the initial BS that wanted me to welcome him to the but he is, he has passed in, in Florida. Oh, <laughs> God. Rest me his soul rest. Person. Oh. oh boy. Well, if you, I mean, I don't think we've ever addressed this on our show, but Dumois, did, I think we cut that out when we talked about it. Did right? we? We did. Okay, let's get juicy with it. So, Dumois is a celebrity like gossip account, and a couple, maybe about a month ago, they posted something about our show. And we know it was about our show because it had the word bloodbath in it and it had like other. Oh, it had. Oh, you don't know. It could have been about that other bloodbath show. (laughs) Oh, wait. (laughs) Nobody talks about that show. (laughs) And um, they're never going to give us the name back. (laughs) We want the fucking name. Yeah, I know. We want the name. Give us the fucking name. So we. um, It's this post on the gossip site said like this popular podcast, which we were like, hey, girl, thanks for calling us popular. (sighs) And uh, it said that we had a lot of controversy behind the scenes and tension that we had. We were a part of a big scandal and Mm. that the tension you were feeling was real. among Nobody felt any tension. But that scandal that they were referring to had nothing to do with the three of us. And it was because. Go ahead. uh, Of. uh, it's potentially we were threat being threatened uh, a lawsuit, uh, and I'm like scared to even say that out we loud. We can't really. S- we just won't say the name, right? But we we'll won't. Just... Yeah. But someone was like behind the scenes threatening to sue us. Like we never want to address like certain like either rumors or no. things like that. But I genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, if someone were to just point also, blank ask me even the the craziest question, I have nothing to hide like ask me i'm yeah. not threatened by it so the threats right. don't actually threaten whatever me. the Please. threat is that we don't want to talk about because we don't want to like add to it because even the thing that started it all was really just an anonymous anecdote and i'll say this kind of to like that person up. yeah to that person who threatened us i'll say this you think you have a one over me i fucking dare you motherfucker <laughs> i dare you let it out of your chest because that is actually not a real threat you think you're threatening me but it's kind of that information's already out there, you little bitch. Yeah. She can yeah. confirm. She can confirm. Bobby can it's confirm. It's just also, I just want to say this: like my currency is not money. My currency and where I see value power is in jokes. So I'm rich and you're broke, bitch. So come <laughs> after me. You got nothing on me, you unfunny piece of shit. Come for me, I dare you. Well, okay. So live and direct, you saw what their reply was. Uh, <sighs> I think I mentioned this in the video before when I spoke about this issue. The number one problem for me, I feel like, I think we've all kind of been in this sort of scenario as men, I feel like, especially if you sometimes um, give in to your, uh, give in to the desires of your penis. I don't think it's really a smart idea to try and hit on women that you happen to be in the same scene as, right? I really don't. I think you should try, if anything, to be a confidant, a supporter, a protector of women who are in your scene or who are in your industry. And even if something happens naturally through the process of you hanging around together for countless amounts of hours or getting to know each other through events and whatnot, then fair enough. But there should be no real effort made to try and hit on people that you're in the same scene with or industry with. I don't think that's good thing of course i've done it myself i've I've had many failed attempts many successful attempts but i don't think it's actually a good thing it it inevitably always leads to issues always always and if it does work out and then you end up breaking up what happens what happens then if you do if you do end up and you end up breaking up what happens then then you have one of the, you have to has to leave the scene you're in. Imagine you move to a new city. You have to leave the scene you're in. You have to find a whole new social circle because people will have their loyalties about who they're kind of loyal to in a group and whatnot. It just doesn't seem like a worthwhile thing to do. I really don't agree with it. I've always thought it's a bad thing personally, in my opinion. So I thought that was obviously a big slip. Then the other slip that comes from it is the fact that you're trying to hit on two people who have already in relationships. Um, or no, two people who, no, relationship, but two people who are kind of, I won't say spoken for, but two people that you shouldn't be touching, I would assume. Annie Lederman, because she is so close to Joe Rogan and you don't want to mess that up and get in trouble with that way. And also in terms of Kalila, she's, you know, with flipping Bobby Lee. And it's well known, well publicized that they're together. And I kind of understand a little bit about 
the Brendan kind of listen. Does it does make any sense? Hear me out a bit, right? I kind of get the mindset that he's coming from in terms of she's a very attractive woman, and clearly Bobby isn't, right? So maybe in like a really narcissistic, broy kind of way, he felt like Bobby didn't deserve her, and he felt like he did. But as men, I think you have been in a position before, I know I have, where you've uttered the line, something along the lines of, um, why are you with him? You should be with me. Those kind of lines, right? And if ever there was a line or a phrase that would get a woman to have, you know, to get a woman to not be into you quicker, it would be that. If you want to get a woman to kind of be turned off and completely disgusted by you and think you're an absolute douche, tell her that, oh, the person that she's seeing is a loser and she should be with you. It doesn't work that way. It maybe works in films or movies or when your friends lie to you and tell you that worked. But trust me, in real life, it doesn't work. It makes you look like an absolute prick. So maybe that's where he was coming from. He was like, nah, man, how did you get her, man? She should be with me, blah, 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 blah. And I'll assume as well, not to be crass, I'll assume too, in the comedy community, when a new woman comes along, it's like fresh meat, right? And you have to try and jump on them before and before, before they see anybody else or before they get impressed, impressed by somebody else. I don't know, maybe. So the, the, that might have been the case. But overall, I just think, I just think it was a real scumbag thing to do really really scumbag thing to do um and i think if anything this should this should have been more of a sort of like oh let's not fuck with this guy at all let's keep him on the outside he's not one of us thing but because brendan's associated with joe rogan i think people kind of skipped it and they kind of let it be they just kind of didn't really pay much attention to it or just kind of let it be where it was but i think this is a real big problem this anything should have been a vindication of just how weird of a guy brendan is and the issues that are at hand i think this should have been a problem I think this should have been the flipping the warning sign for everybody out there seeing it because I don't really think that's cool. I really don't. Like imagine someone doing that to you. Like imagine you that that that's your missus and somebody's you know like creeping on her like that, saying I, I don't know, man. It's, it's especially when it's a very public thing. Do you know what I mean? And and everyone knows that to be true. I just don't think that's on. I really don't think that's on personally. But you know, maybe I'm in the minority in that one. Maybe I'm in the minority. Let's get rid of this quickly. Oof. Let's put this back on there. Bish bash bosh. Hopefully that loads. Yep, cool, cool, cool. How can we can we pop this chat out? Can I pop it out? Well, let me get it out this way. Bear with me a second. Uh, can I pop this chat out? Let me see. Let me get this over here. Get rid of that. Uh your wrong issues are BS. Okay, cool. Let me just quickly put it on here. Bear with me. I want to see the chat. I'm just going to have the chat live on my phone anyway, so I don't have to use this too tough. Okay, cool. Done. Yeah, maybe I'll just do it this way, actually. Like that. Let's get rid of the finder windows. Bish, bash. Let's get rid of that. Yeah, cool. All right, let's do that this way. Hopefully, yeah, I'm going to put it this way, yeah. Uh, yes, Jess, big up. I am back. I'm back like cook crack, mate. I had to, I had to, I had to give it to them again. I had to, I had to do it. I had to be um, a man of my word and absolutely make this work. So here I am trying to make this work. <laughs> Let's do this. Um, let me get this. Yeah, so I've got the chat on my phone. So if you see me looking down, don't be alarmed. I'm not. I'm not ignoring you guys. Uh, so let's put this over there. Let's move this around here like that. Actually, no. Let's put it back where it was. Okay, we got that one out of the way. Let's go back to this. Um, <clears throat> big up, Jess. Big up. Big up. We we made it in the end. They said I couldn't do it. They said it wasn't possible. They they reported my channel to YouTube. They said I was a piece of crap. They said I could never amount to anything. They said, "Who's this guy? Uh, what's he doing?" I switched. I switched three computers today. Right. I turned off my computers or my host of laptops seven times. Reset my settings. Gone on YouTube. Did all the thing, and I'm back again like cut crack. Back like cut crack. All right. Bloody hell. Let's do this. Alright, cool. So, next video. 
I'm just gonna get this all loaded up and done here. Display capture. That's it. Boom. Is it working? It is. Let's do this. Oof. Is that working? No, it's not, is it? Okay. Display capture is working, but we need to get rid of this, don't we? Nope. Let's do this again. Let's get rid of all these window things and make it look sexy. Bear with me one second. Yeah, now it's working nice. You see what I mean? It's working. I stretch the fit screen. Oh, look at that. That looks sweet, doesn't it, mate? Absolutely sweet as a nut. All right, cool. So we're going to go through this again. So this clip is a bit of a mad one. I think most of you have maybe seen it before, or maybe you haven't actually. This is a mad clip I found on the Friday Night Kiss subreddit of somebody recording Brendan's set live in a comedy club. Now, I normally wouldn't be for something like this. I don't think this is cool. But considering this lawsuit that's going on at the moment, I don't think Brendan is afforded any sort of grace or any sort of respect in that way because he clearly isn't respecting his fellow comedians, his fellow comedians' partners, and the sanctity of just content creation, everything. Do you know what I mean, he's being a bit of a piece of shit. So I think if anything this should be comeuppance for all that sort of stuff so unfortunately we're going to have to subject ourselves to nine minutes right of brendan shaw's stand-up and let's see if we think this is funny right let's see if we actually think this is hilarious and that malarkey but i don't think this is going to be good but let's just see what the vibe is saying this is brendan um random recording at the hollywood improv i think it is and this might be an indication of what the special is going to sound like so this is what's gonna. This is what you're gonna be subjected to in terms of the Gringo Pappy, if you are eagerly anticipating to watch it. So let's see. I made a Mexican, Houston. I made a Mexican. You guys are gonna love this set. Um, yeah, get ready. Hang on tight. Listen, I. Uh, I don't mean like Taco Bell Mexican. No, 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 no. I'm talking Guadalajara. Yes. Born and raised, came to the States 10 years ago, illegally Mexican. <laughs> Shout out to coyotes, they're fucking expensive, but they get it done, they get it done. I dated a lot of white girls with big titties and flat asses and it just never worked out for me. No. Is it me or is his shirt really small? This is a little nitpick, it doesn't really matter, but I guess this is one of the problems with being a stand-up comedian that loves fashion. I would imagine, because I remember Joe Rogan saying the same thing about him when he does stand-up, because he's got loads of tattoos on his arms. He tends to wear these really ugly, horrible, kind of like long-sleeve um, dress shirt things, right? And usually he says because he finds that when he performs with a short-sleeve t-shirt, the tattoos become a bit of a distraction. So I wonder if you're into fashion and you like clothes, like myself and other people, you know, out there in the world, I'm not the only person, it can be a bit of a... It can be a bit of a box you put yourself in, right? Or it can make people pay unnecessary attention to what you're wearing as opposed to what's coming out of your mouth. Now, the counter would be, if your jokes are funny enough, no one will even notice you're up there naked if you're funny enough. Do you know what I mean? You could probably get up there butt naked, but if you've got the jokes, people are going to be laughing. You know what I mean, you're going to be splitting their ribs and then they're going to remember later on down the line, oh shit, that guy was butt ass naked. But yeah, his shirt looks really tight, innit? Or small, I don't know. That's probably why he wrote the sleeves, but hey, let's continue. I'll never get this. One of my boys goes, dude, dude, you're with the Latina, Poppy. Yeah, you know why? Because they're fun and they're spicy. No doubt, definitely spicy. They're spicy. You know what's yeah, again, like, I'm not going to keep stopping this all the time, but have you noticed something about his comedy? He does this thing where he doesn't actually tell jokes. Maybe it's the way he does his comedy. It's not like... It's not very, um, there's not a lot of like set up punchline and shit, right? It's mostly just telling a story that happens to be funny and then saying it in a funny way, which is essentially what he does on the podcast, which is why I've always argued for a long time. Why does Brendan do this? Why doesn't he just, um, I've always said he doesn't need to, to do stand up comedy. He could easily just do his podcast and just do it live on the stage people would still come out to support him if he just had a way of kind of presenting what he does on the podcast on the stage. Maybe it'll be like a live podcast thing. Maybe they would have like different people coming up doing other things. Some of the guys that he has do songs. Maybe Kat can do a segment on the stage. Like that would be a far better way to go about things than doing this whole stand-up thing because he's not very funny. You know what I mean? He's not like a funny person. He says fun He has funny stories, but he's not someone that can 
I feel like when put a joke together, which is why you're seeing this, it kind of just sounds like he's talking about stuff that he took about on a podcast, but he's just made it stage friendly material, which might be a bit of a hustle. But yeah, it sounds terrible so far. We're only 46 seconds in. I've already stopped it seven times. Spicy meats? They're assholes. That's what that means. <laughs> we first got together. She was cooking authentic Mexican food every night, seven nights a week. I'm not used to this. I was like, what? So he does every Wednesday? Fuck yeah. <laughs> no dumbass. Not to eat it every Wednesday. Real Mexican dishes, Houston. Real shit from scratch. Authentic shit. I'm talking. Huevos de chero. <laughs> Pico de Gallo, my favorite, Chiri Every night though, every night, seven years later, every goddamn night, I know I look Latin, just feel about who I am. She's like, honey, is he not a fucking Puerto Rican shortstop for the Rangers? What the fuck is that right now? Yeah, I was just about to say the same thing. I'm glad John said it. I was just about to say the same thing. I was just about to say the same thing. This, he's speaking too fast. It feels like, oh, it was Jones talking to me. Should I breathe too slowly? Maybe it's me. <laughs> Maybe I'm the one breathing too slowly. But he's speaking way too fast, I feel like. Not taking a breath. And it's kind of just sounding mad. You know what I mean? Um, it sounds like a bit of a run-on sentence a little bit. Um, oh, I don't know. I haven't laughed once yet. But anyway, let's continue. I did that DNA test where you spit in a little tube mailed in. Yep, they sent me a jar of mayonnaise back. I... As a white person, white people know this, we need a fucking, fucking cheeseburger or a grilled cheese once a week. Read the white pamphlet. Everybody knows this. Every time she brings dinner, I'm like, oh, does she really think beans go with every goddamn meal? She for real? That's funny. That's good. Like, oh, I wonder if she ever thinks, oh, maybe Brenda's not trying to shit his pants tonight. How about that? That's funny. Every time dinner would come, my ass would be like this. Fuck, dude! Fuck! Fuck, dude! It's so spicy today! There's so many fucking cars, dude! We can't take it anymore, Poppy! We'd rather see a dick down here, I'm gonna be honest, man. I've never been thicker since I got with a Mexican man. I mean, they eat fucking bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese. Bean cheese. We're just gonna carb load year round? That's a game plan? We never tailor off the cars? We're just all gonna be built like armadillos? That's the fucking. I didn't catch that bit. What to. <laughs> Was this a solo show? No, I think this is just a standard thing that he does during the weekend where, yeah, there's like shows around places where... The one thing as well that he does that's probably not beneficial to his stand-up career is that he doesn't necessarily play in front of random audiences. He's always just um, playing in front of his own crowd. So he'll say he's on tour. He'll book some shows for the weekend at Hollywood Improv. He'll have his guys open up and he will basically do the, the kind of main set. Right? What's that? Is that like 9 to 10 or something? I don't know what the main set is in the company. I'm not too sure. Or 10 to 11. Whatever that main set is. Um, but I don't know, man. It's just... It's painful, brother. It's painful. Big with three fucking C's, man. It's getting out of control. So I decided to go on this keto diet a few months ago. If you know what keto is... Keto's a diet where you can't eat Mexican food. That's a diet. <laughs> a lot of people are doing it apparently. You guys say that you can't touch Mexican food. Here's my fucking problem. My mother-in-law, my mother-in-law who I love, makes the best fucking Mexican food from scratch every Friday at my goddamn house. Every Friday. So when I started the diet, I told my girl, I went, hey, you know I love your mom. She's the best. Food, my favorite. That's why I'm fat as fuck. But do me a favor. <laughs> Will you let your mom know I'm on keto? Will you do me a solid tone on my keto? She goes, why don't you tell her? She speaks English. I went, but she doesn't know that she doesn't. <laughs> you keep saying that, she clearly fucking doesn't. <laughs> do me a fucking solid tone on keto. Six weeks goes by, your boy's on keto. Haven't touched a fucking car. I walked in my house last Friday, there's a fucking fiesta for my favorite food. My favorite fucking food. You know how like Theo Vaughn can't be around cocaine? <laughs> I love that guy, but you know, 
You know how like Theo sees a fucking line of coke and snorts up from right field? That's how I am with churros. I just, I can't fucking be around it, man. I don't have the real power. So I want... That's a weird joke as well to say because it's like you're basically name dropping in an effort to get the joke, right? Is, am I on? Can you hear me? Yeah, you're name dropping in an effort to kind of get a laugh. I'm not a fan of that whatsoever. It's like, what? Like, what is this, man? And also, maybe this is a weird observation to make, but if you're into like, because clearly you're in, clearly he's kind of into exotic women, let's say, right? Or women who kind of come from you know, um, spicy places who would probably have assets that he would like, like a big bum, big tits, whatever it may be. Usually I find, I don't know if this is the case, but usually if you're into that, you're usually into the culture too. There's usually a bit of interest into maybe the music, into maybe visiting the country, the food, the people, usually maybe the sports they do there, whatever, literature. There's usually a thing that also kind of ties you in. It's not just the fact that you like Brazilian women. It's maybe because you want to visit the country or maybe you just like Brazilian women, but then, you know, through v being with a Brazilian woman, you might then start getting into other things concerning the country. But you take an active interest because that's somebody that you kind of want to share maybe the rest of your life with, somebody you might want to start a family with. So you want to take an interest in it because your kids are going to end up being half of where that person's from. So it's pretty important so i don't really get this whole like let me shit on my partner's country thing stick from because it doesn't it feels like it doesn't come from a real place it feels like he's kind of making himself angry for the sake of being angry and if he is angry about it and it's a frustration it says more about him and his lack of worldliness or his ignorance to how other people live and what they do right because i remember there's a story that he shared once about it was at christmas or something on Chris, i don't know if it might, might be really special he shared it on a podcast or there's a clip of it where he said something like i think it was a christmas holiday or something where he was fed up with the food so he ordered a pizza so i think he just ordered dominoes for him and his son because i guess you know they were fed up of eating their mom's cooking and it's like bruv like you've got real authentic mexican cooking being made in your mexican food story being made in your house on a daily basis You've got other family coming in, bringing in their delicacies and their specialities and their family recipes, and it's still not good enough. You have to go and get a Domino's. It's not even like he's going to order a really fancy um, stone-baked oven pizza from a really bougie little place. No, he's ordering a Domino's to replace a home. Do you know how much of a spit in the face that is to somebody? Because I know that, you know, growing up, I was taught to be considerate and to have manners where if you go around someone's house and they invite you to eat something you're not meant to say no you're meant to accept whatever they're giving to you and eat it with a smile if you don't like it you complain afterwards to your own friends or you just keep it yourself but you don't go and say you go into someone's house and they make you food and you say nah it's all right mate i'm just gonna order something off uber eats imagine that's absolutely psychotic behavior but yeah let's continue we've only got a few more minutes left this is absolutely brutal up in the house, I go, Mama, come, I know you know. I know somebody told you I'm on keto. I know you know. She goes, Mio, 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 I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, cabron, 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 cabron. She got this straight, she goes, cabron, look, taquitos. I'm like, no keto, bitch. That was funny. Tranquilo, no keto, bitch. That was funny. I like that. That was a good joke. So she can stay quick, I guess. To my DNA, the other thing you guys should know about marrying a Mexican, there's gonna be flaming hot Cheetos all over your house. <laughs> they love them. They love them. It's like catnip for Mexicans. They fucking love them. Flaming hot, flaming hot Cheeto jokes in 2022? I don't know, man, this is horrible. I feel like a refugee in my own goddamn house. <laughs> my white friends, I'm gonna date a Latina girl before I go, dude, just fucking put a little effort in. Learn Spanish, dude. How hard can it be? Show a little effort, you'll learn Spanish while bitch. I'm 38. I struggle with English at times. <laughs> you know what it feels like? You know what it feels like that my five year old son will roll up on his bike and talk shit to me in Spanish? You know what that feels like as a father? I have no fucking clue what he's talking about. <laughs> I thought Pucho was that dude for the longest time. I did. I, I didn't know, man. I dropped him off at school last week and I went, Later, Pucho! 
The teachers are like, what the fuck? <laughs> The one thing I love about Mexicans, though, man, is uh, you guys always have something to celebrate. Every week there's something popular. As a white person, my dad's like, oh, your birthday, motherfucker. I'm like, all right, once a year, be cool, be cool. Not Mexicans, every week there's something popping, man. Last week, some girl turned 15. Not related to us. They do party at my fucking house. Quintiera or some shit, what do you call it? I don't know. Is that what, Quintiera? Unbelievable, man. These Mexicans give a fuck about COVID, no social distancing. I walk in the house, there's a mariachi band. <laughs> there's a giant pinata, the beat the shit out of this thing. There's flaming hot cheese over my goddamn head. <sighs> the lack of jokes, man. The lack of jokes is just. I'm in the wrong profession. Imagine my man's getting paid thousands of dollars to do this shit, you know? To basically just tell funny stories. Not even to sit, again, no setup, punchline, no tags, nothing. Just that. <sighs> yeah, big up, Jess. Um, thanks for thanks for tuning in again and sticking by me. I really do appreciate you and hope you have a lovely dinner, my dear. Much, much appreciate you. Um, yeah, I don't blame you for leaving. This is, ops oh, this is honestly brutal. This is like open your window and throw yourself out with a saucepan brutal. God almighty. Look at my girl, you what are we celebrating? Why should you get to Harvard or some shit? And she goes, no, just turn 15, no. That's cool, I'll pay for that. That's about five o'clock, yeah, let's go to that. Another thing I love about Mexicans is you guys stick together. You guys have each other's back at all costs. I fucking love that. You guys are so loyal to each other. White people, we're not like that, are we? Not at all. Not at all. As soon as we turn 16, we'll fucking see Peter and Debbie. Not Mexican, you guys stick together. Like, you never walk in a bar and see one Mexican hammered by themselves. Oh, no way. They're there with their egos. And I think, um, I would imagine, if you were a stand-up comedian and you were coming up, one of the lessons that you probably learn to try and kind of perfect your craft of to sharpen your skills would be you try and reduce the times you do that in a voice in in a, how do you do that voice in a, what's that voice anyway you know that thing where you kind of do an inflection on your voice you'll try to keep that to a minimum because that's usually a bit of a cop out because it kind of you know you could get away with tagging a joke and making it sound funny by saying and she went that away you know but if you just need to write a better joke so it sounds better just saying the words she went that way and then people start laughing as opposed to high-pitched, gayified, campy voice to make it sound way more funny. I would imagine because he's doing that quite often. Yeah, over there, over there, all this sort of bullshit. And it's like, huh? And it's like he's doing this physical thing, but it's not really physical. It's just like kooky, like, oh, I'm so crazy. You know, that sort of stuff like... Okay, three more minutes. Come on, Agostina. I was taking my family out for dinner the other night. My family, I mean all 14 of them. And uh, <laughs> we walk outside and they all gather around my car. I drive a two-door coupe, it makes no fucking sense. <laughs> and my mother-in-law's at the trunk of all. Mama, what are you doing? We just talked about this inside the house. I will take you to the address. You have your own car. We will meet at the restaurant. She goes, no, me home. We fit. The fuck? No, you don't fit. She goes, I know. We fit, you know. Please don't do this. I promise you. You do not fit. No way. No. Sure enough, we fucking fit, y'all. We fucking fit. It was unbelievable, man. Yeah. Unreal, man. Good for them. Forget I'm going to wrap up this Mexican bit. I go hard on my throat. <laughs> This is something um what's people saying in the chat. I saw Brennan do stand up about three years ago. He basically did the same set. It was brutal. Oh wow. Hold on. Fred um Fred w Watley. Are you saying that you saw him three years ago and he did the same set three years ago? Holy shit. Um Height says, What would this guy talk about if he weren't married to someone who isn't white? Exactly. That's what I mean. It's such it's so it's such hacky jokes. It's like white people are like, black people are like, black people talk in the cinema. White people are scared to confront them. It's like hacky shit, man. Like, come on. 
uh ray chan joint says a funny maybe if you're just um talking to your mates shooting the shit but as a stand-up this blows exactly that's why i said he shouldn't do stand-up comedy i think he should try and find a way to make a live podcast work because i think that would work for them if they went out together as a crew like that whole team and they did shows places like t5k live and he got up and did a few minutes of improv jokes or whatever riffing that would work really well but this him just being a stand-up comedian and getting up on and telling jokes imagine he comes on after a tim dylan a mark norman a dan soda um i don't know whatever person and he has to tell these jokes like what Another person says, um, Andy Burris says, I feel what you're saying about being interested in your partner's culture and food. I think even as dumb as he is, he's partly be playing the character. True. Um, Keith McLeod says, just tuning in, maybe this was already mentioned, but it seems like he uses swear words as a punchline quite often. Yeah, I think I've, I've started to appreciate clean comics because of that more over the years. I think when I was younger, I used to see them a little bit as like being wimps or being pussies because they didn't want to swear. But then the older you get, especially if you're in different scenarios, different surroundings, you're with different people. I don't know, maybe you just mature a little bit. People just swearing in, like constantly doesn't necessarily tickle you anymore. You want someone to actually tell a funny story or to like be very thoughtful or to pull something from some, an everyday observation that you never thought about. And usually the best people to do that are clean comments because there's no crux of the swear word to kind of punch up a shitty joke. And I feel like, especially with someone like a Brendan, who legitimately I feel like isn't a funny person, because I think to be funny, you need to have gone through, you need to basically have a painful life. You have to have gone through some sort of level of hardship. But this guy's probably always been six foot plus his whole entire life, 200 pounds, fairly good looking, um, you know, played all the sports. There's no real time in his life where he was bullied or looked down upon. Maybe he didn't get his dreams or whatnot, but he hasn't really have, he's not really got a good origin story to be a stand up comedian. So if that's the case, you kind of have to kind of trick yourself or force yourself into corners so you can get the funny out. And I think one of the real keys to it would be if he was to just commit to not swearing, um, commit to not being a hack and talking about family stuff and, you know, his wife being Mexican, all that shit. Um, commit to maybe, I don't know, not doing that weird voice, um, in a, what you call it, inflection shit that he does, where you're like, Ooh, to make it campy. That would actually help him to be funnier, but maybe it's too late. Who knows? Um, Ball116 says this has to be a massive mistake for his career not that he has much respect in comedy scene but nobody will make any respect for him after this of course another person says Jesus is a Mexican car um, Gary says for someone who isn't constantly calling other comedians hacks this is pure shitty observational humor exactly and Dash X says what they they did that years ago and how he got his nonsense dream anyway let's continue one minute left let's continue oh I know that's right me and my girl when I grew up <laughs> So she wanted to go to couples therapy. I'm like, all right, good luck finding one in COVID. She fucking found one, man. She fucking found one. Two star review, whatever. We'll take what we can get. So we're driving to couples therapy the other day. She's crying. She ran out of flaming hot Cheetos. I'm crying just as my life currently. And, uh, what a weird way to like continue a set so you talk about praising your family you talk about taking the piss out of them and then suddenly you just drop in that you are going through couples therapy there's nothing to set this up at all. And he didn't even do it in a way where it was kind of like it cut through. He just rolled into it. No real pause. It, there's a lot of rushing in his sets. He rushes quite often. A lot of, and again, I talk really fast too. So I, I can recognize when somebody's panicking on stage and maybe a bit scared. He's just rushing too much. We pulled, dude, we pulled this fucking therapist's office. It's what you get, man. We pull up. I've never seen shit like this in my life. This therapist has her name in giant red neon letters on the side of her office door. Says Dr. Rodriguez. I go, yeah. Well, it's an away game for your boy, isn't it? <laughs> okay, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I'm sorry. I'm done. This is too shit. Um, that was Brendan Schaub's 10 minute set somewhere. Um, Mexican material. This is probably going to end up being in a special. Usually I would never do something like this. And I also don't encourage it. I don't condone it. I think if you do go to a comedy show, don't record the sets and upload them onto YouTube or to anywhere. Enjoy them live as they should be enjoyed. But considering the recent events in which Brendan is threatening to sue um, a couple of ladies who accused him of being a creep, 
to one of which who's currently dating Bobby Lee, Kylila. Um, they were in a very public relationship and he still hollered at her at that time, which is completely unacceptable. And obviously when adding Liederman, who you would imagine is a peer and somebody you probably should leave alone. Um, but he did that too, even though he was in a relationship. So with all that being said, I think this is why we're watching this. And I would hope that I could get the nine minutes back that I had to watch. And I also hope you guys haven't gone to sleep or thrown yourself out the window, having to subject yourself to watching this either with me, because that was brutal. That was legitimately brutal. Like God almighty. <sighs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Anyway, let's just, let's just continue. Next one. You got a clip here where Brendan doesn't remember the date of his special when it's dropping, and then you've got backflip over here, as they call him on the Fire and the Kids subreddit, backflip, basically um, trying his best to make sure Brendan's happy and not upset with him. And no, he just he caps for him, and he comes in and just yeah, I don't know, just watch, watch the clip. Your special drops, April special April drops 28th. April twenty third. The Green Girl Pop twenty third or twenty eighth twenty eighth. Come on, he said twenty third. I rode with him twenty eighth. Yep, 28th. I'm sorry. Ten Oh. Your special drops. What? April special April drops. 28th. April twenty third. The Green Girl Pop. Twenty third. Twenty eighth. Twenty eighth. Come on. He said twenty third. I rode with him. Twenty eighth. Yep. 28th. I'm sorry. Ten <sighs> this man is a disappointment. This man makes me really upset. Like this guy it makes me really, really upset. He really, really makes me upset. Like maybe he's just a people pleaser, or he's just a really nice human being who just wants good vibes and doesn't like bad energy, but. The level of disrespect I've seen him being subjected to, whether it's Brendan putting his fingers in his mouth, cutting him off, turning his back to him when he's talking, just dismissing his arguments. Like, I don't know, man. I just, I, I don't know how he does it. I really don't know how he puts up with it. I don't know. They must pay really well over there for him to put up with that level of disrespect. Or maybe he doesn't see it as disrespect. Maybe he just sees it as like Brendan being Brendan, but he gets subjected to so much nonsense on that show. It's brutal to watch, but it's not more brutal than watching Brian Callen, who was one at one time the founder of this show, one of the mainstays of the Fire and the Kid, right? Somebody that a lot of people had a lot of time for. There were times I remember when I used to watch this back on the Fox days when people would say, oh, Brian Callen's actually a good one. Let's just watch it for him only, alone. Now it's got to a point where it doesn't matter who you watch it for, the show's an absolute car crash. But it's even worse to see Brent, Brian in this state disheveled he looks he looks like he's aged 20 years since the rape allegations of course that would probably do that to you he's clearly the employee now brendan's this is brendan's show and he hires him to co-host with him but he's definitely more an employee than he is a founder of this show it just feels horrible man it really does feel horrible to see brian in this state and it's even worse because for the longest time being a big the Fire and the Kid fan, especially from ages ago, I've always said that I felt like Brian never really wanted to be a stand-up comedian, but he happened to be really good at it. He it came natural to him because he's a funny dude, or because he writes good jokes, or because he's, his physical comedy is pretty funny as well. But I just think he never really wanted to be a stand-up. He wanted to be a Hollywood actor first, and because the Hollywood acting didn't work out, he then kind of fell back on doing stand-up because that's kind of maybe the closest thing to being a Hollywood actor or to being the next Tom Hanks as he was being told by some of his agents when he was coming up. But because of that, it feels even worse because it's like he never wanted to be a stand-up and he obviously probably didn't really care too much about podcasting. Even if you remember the, uh, the early days of The Fire and the Kid, he'd always miss episodes or come late because he's going to auditions. He'd always be checking his phone. You know, the... the the, the podcast was always like second priority it wasn't the first priority for him then when he got in school sorry then when he got in school and got on the goldbergs he definitely made sure to kind of um does that make sense yeah when he got in school and the goldbergs that was definitely most that was like it felt like him finally getting to do what he really wanted to do do you get what i mean I just, I don't know, man. I just, I just feel bad for him. I really do. I, maybe I'm in the minority here, but I really do feel bad for him. I'm not going to lie. I feel really, really bad for the guy, man. I don't think that's fair. <laughs> I really don't think that's fair the slightest. But maybe I'm in the minority here. Um, let me continue on here. What does alerts that I miss? I don't know what they were. I don't want to get this thing back up on the screen again so it doesn't go mad. Um, let's just continue. 
Oh, oh, yeah, let's watch this. This is a good one. Someone on the Friday Kids subreddit put together this sick compilation where it basically um, splices in Conor McGregor's promotion for his whiskey, Proper 12, and then Brendan Schaub's dog shit promotion kind of effort thing that he done for his whiskey, um, Tiger Fick. Is it Tiger Fick? Fick Tiger? Whatever it's called. Tiger Come? Whatever. Let's just play it and see how different these two adverts are. And clearly you can see who's the amateur and or who's the professional and who's the amateur. I want to give this to the world as, as a gift from myself and from Ireland. This is who I am. I am an Irish man. A true Irish man. Proper, proper Irish whiskey. Proper as well. It's in the name. Let's be honest. When Connor says that name, it sounds legit, isn't it? I think before, when you say it yourself, it sounds a little bit G-A-Y or a little bit lame. But when he says it, it sounds legit. I legitimately want to go and buy a bottle of it right now. I swear to God, it sounds fucking good, isn't it? <laughs> is the district I come from. It's a small suburb in Dublin, Ireland called Crumlin. It's a place dear to my heart. With each bottle and with each case we sell, we are going to give back to the first responders. They are the people who enter the buildings when people are running out. And that's, that's heroic to me. I don't see what that has to do with whiskey. Why is he doing first responder stuff? But again, it just sounds badass. He's got his little crew of people that he's working with, investors, designers, whiskey connoisseurs, barrel people. I don't know what they do, but this whole thing sounds amazing. You know what I mean? You just want to buy a bottle. It sounds very aspirational. Let's continue. And supposedly I've heard, I don't know if you guys can tell me in the comments down below, I've never had proper tour, but I've heard through some people that it tastes like piss, that it's really, really bad. But it doesn't matter because Connor's made it sound cool and he's made it sound tasty. Look what finally came in, kiddos. Well, not kids, I'm not alcohol for everything. Okay. Look Just before we continue with this advert, Am I the only one that thinks a bottle doesn't even look like whiskey? I think the bottle design might not be too bad, but the label in combination with how dark the bottle is, or maybe, I don't know, it just looks like it could be soy sauce or something, or vinaigrette, or like olive oil. It doesn't look like it's whiskey, does it? Or am I, or am I mistaken? What do you guys think? Do you think, it's, do you think it's olive oil? Do you think it's whiskey? Please tell me. Cause I don't, I don't think that looks like think. I don't think that looks like um, I don't think that looks like whiskey, mate. That doesn't look like whiskey at all. It looks like anything else apart from whiskey. It could even be like, if you told me that was liquor, I would, I would believe you. I mean, sorry, a liqueur, like you know, whatever, maybe like those chocolate drinks and shit. I'd believe you if you told me that, but it doesn't look like whiskey. What are people saying here? No, <laughs> Mr. Singh said it looks like a dildo. <laughs> Honestly, let's continue. What finally came in, kiddos? Well, not kids, it's not alcohol beverage, but if you're over 21, it finally came in straight off the boat from Japan. Finally, your boy's whiskey, Tiger Thick, finally hit the shores of the United States. One, it finally came in straight off the boat from Japan. Finally, do any of you believe this has been made in Japan? Do any of you believe this made made in Japan? Again, I don't know anything about whiskey and about how it's manufactured or done or put together. But I can't imagine it can be very easy to start your own whiskey brand and then to immediately go and get Japanese whiskey. Because that's obviously the one everyone wants, right? There's that one. What's that one? That sounds like nigger. It's like Nika or something, right? That's a really one everyone kind of rates as really being a high brow, really tasty whiskey. And I think I've had a few that are maybe in the price range below that in bars and stuff. And they really taste amazing, especially when you get the really good ones because they don't have that really bitter aftertaste that you get from drinking like a Jameson's or whatnot. But does anyone believe this guy has managed to launch his whiskey on his own and then get it Japanese done? Really? To me, it sounds like something, you know, when people say it's made in America or made in the UK, but what they do is that they get the components of the material or sorry, the components of the jacket or the cap or whatever it may be, or the bag, and then they construct it in the UK. Then they put the made in UK label because technically it was made in UK, but it wasn't really because you manufactured all the materials and all the labelings and the packaging from another country and you just put it together. Or, you, or in some cases I've heard people do where if they just put the label on it, 
that is part of the construction of the garment. So they put the made in England tag just because of that as well. But I don't believe this was imported in from Japan in the slightest. Your boys whiskey, tiger stick, finally hit the shores of the United States. Here's the thing though. Tastes fantastic, two years in the making. Already won awards for the label, the Muse Creative Awards, not big. <laughs> A, an award for a label you're showing off an award for a label it's a whiskey you're meant to drink it the taste and the quality comes from the, you drinking it not from the fucking label that should be a sign that it's terrible and also have you seen any clips i'm not sure if you guys have been aware of this but there's been a few clips floating around where maybe it's from like the fight companions or stuff where he basically pours yet lets people to taste the whiskey and they clearly don't like it when they put it in their mouth, you can see the aftertaste. Like, it's no, no, I've not seen a single clip of someone drinking his whiskey where they go, mmm. Even Brian, when he tasted it, he couldn't hide his displeasure. Like, he was trying to keep his face straight. Because you can tell. There's no way this guy can, like, there's just no way. He doesn't take enough care with his stand up comedy sets. He doesn't actually try to write funny jokes. He doesn't try to research his topics when he's talking about MMA, a, fight, a, a, a sport that he was a professional in at the heavyweight division at the highest level. He doesn't even take time to research fight cards. There's one clip I saw where he didn't even know that, you know, Reebok had changed, that UFC's kit, um, kit sponsor isn't Reebok anymore. It's now Venom. He didn't know that. Imagine that. Can, can you really think that person is going to be able to be able to manufacture and produce a really decent whiskey? Come on. Deal. But, um, you know, you get in this whiskey game, and I thought, come out with a whiskey, Brandon, come out with a whiskey, create great labels, great taste in whiskey, and that's just off to the races. Not so fast, young man. Not so fast. Now the business. Hold on, let me quickly read this comment. Um, let's see. Mr. B Cut says, they blend two different countries together and make it a new whiskey, from what I understand. Okay. If they blend two whiskeys together, how can you call that Japanese whiskey, though, if it's two different blends? I don't understand that bit. Oh, he put it in Japanese barrels, Jack Cole. What a clever motherfucker. So he's combined two different whiskeys and then put them in Japanese barrels, which would then make it what? Made in... Oh, that is such a flipping... That is real scammy, isn't it? That is, that's like DSP, Wings of Redemption, Boogie levels of scam. Oh my God, come on. I don't get why you just couldn't get a Jameson sponsorship. Why not just get a Jameson sponsorship and just develop a new taste, a new flavor, sorry, a new flavor for them or something? Why not just do that? Like a flavor for people that like keto, a flavor for UFC people, jujitsu people, podcasters, one that you can drink in the morning. I don't know, whatever. Why not just do that? License something. Like, why would you want to... Let's just continue. But then again, I don't know if this is actually... This, this might be a license too. This might be one of those things where they you pick from t different blends and then they just you just basically design the label maybe there might be one of those kind of things like a kind of plug and play one oh god almighty Inside comes in because you can't just ship it and sell it to everybody like that it doesn't work like that you have to get distribution your boy learned the hard way so now we're in the middle of dealing with yo different distributors yo are you hearing this promotion did you see the promotion at the start with Conor McGregor and all his cool boys walking around, right? Him saying, this is proper 12. I'm a proper Irishman. 12 is my district of where I come from, right? The fact that he was on benefits and he come from the mud and he did it all by himself. And now he's got this crew of people that he's working with in conjunction to make the best whiskey in the world. And they're giving it to first responders who risk their lives and blah, blah, blah. Then you've got this guy here telling you that he didn't know you needed to get distribution to sell whiskey. He legitimately thought you could just make a whiskey and put it up on your Shopify and people would be able to buy it like that. Are you insane? I think there was a clip I saw somewhere where he was like, he thought he was going to be able to like strong arm clubs into stocking his whiskey if they wanted to book him on the show. Imagine the hubris on somebody that thinks that would work. Imagine the hubris. Imagine the arrogance that you would think that you could just jump in and start your whiskey brand put it up on a Shopify and force clubs to stock it if they want to book you to play in their clubs as if you're Dave fucking Chappelle or something oh my god and this is a promotion video clip too this is advertising the, the flipping whiskey this is meant to be aspirational you're meant to you, what you're meant to feel watching this you're meant to feel oh man he didn't know how to do the thing I'm going to support him now and buy the whiskey and again do you know how much this fucking whiskey is 
it's like eighty dollars or something. I remember seeing somewhere like it's nearly a hundred dollars for this whiskey that no one's heard of. When you can get all this other stuff he's got at the back behind him, Jameson's, um, what's that one called? Is it Maker's Mark? Whatever that one everyone called that, but that uses on podcast. There might be a Blanters there, whatever, right? They, they're all kind of within the fifty dollar sort of, you know, thirty to fifty, sixty dollar sort of price range, and they probably all taste considerably better than whatever he's got going of going on down here. God Almighty! Because you can't just ship it and sell it to everybody like that. It doesn't work like that. You have to get distribution. Your boy learned the hard way. So now we're in the middle of dealing with different distributors to get it into certain market. But you don't go nationwide. You start Hold on, I just saw this in the comments here. Thank you, Christina, for sharing. Christina Carroll said the following: um, I watched a taste test of this, and the guy said that it was um, the guy on this said um it tasted better than proper 12 but then he saw the price difference between the two and brendan is charging a higher price for this so it tastes better than proper 12 but it doesn't taste anything near what the price tag says crazy so it's just a jameson's because jameson's probably tastes better than proper 12 i'd imagine uh, unless maybe someone could tell me to chat any different if you've had jameson's before and you've had proper 12 what do you rate better this is insane with five markets like Dallas, Colorado, California, Arizona, New York. You see how it goes there, and then you expand from there, but you go five major markets. I'm learning on the go. You know, this business, I'm trying to get my foot in the door. So if you're a distributor, you're a seller, holler at your boy. Oh my god. Did you see the earlier clip we, we watched earlier? That was Conor McGregor being aspirational. Conor McGregor, former two weight class champion telling you that he's setting up his own proper 12 whiskey and that he wants you to drink it because he wants you to believe in him the way and he's fighting the way you're going to believe in his whiskey aspirational shit stuff to get behind now this guy's telling you that he had no knowledge of how to set up this stuff doesn't know anything to do with whiskey is struggling to get involved and now he's trying to look for distributors and help on the promotional video that's going out to the public We're doing the work on our end, but uh, it's here, man, and it is fantastic. I'm excited, but that's the hustle now, trying to get distribution. It's just uh, something to think about. So here we are. <sighs> what a bizarre promo to shoot. What a bizarre promo to shoot. Does that make any sense to you? Why would you shoot that? Why would you shoot that? Oh, my God. I'm actually curious to actually taste this whiskey to see what it tastes like. I really am. But if you can't get distribution sorted in the US, there's no chance it's going to end up in Europe. No chance. He's probably going to end up drinking the entire stock that he ordered of it anyway. He's probably got pallets and pallets of this shit just sitting around somewhere in a, in a, in a flipping, um, in a warehouse somewhere, just sitting there. I don't know if, if, if the, does whiskey have a long, um, does whiskey go off? Does whiskey can whiskey stay around for ages? I'm assuming it can, right? Or to keep in a cool and dark place. It doesn't have a, like an off day or something. But Jesus Christ, man, what a bad promo! Terrible promo. Um, let's see what people are saying in the chat here quickly. Um, everyone needs to start emailing every distributor in the country and inform them of who they might be dealing with. Uh, Mrs. Singh says, "I bet Brendan's wife can't use normal toilets anymore." <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so mean <laughs> Christino Carroll says this is the worst promo for any whiskey that sounds like a tiger cum exactly that's why honestly right I said beforehand why didn't he just call it tiger whiskey why is it called tiger thick or thick tiger what's it called is it tiger thick what's it called what's the name of it it should just be called tiger whiskey I don't even know the name of it is what is the name of it it's called Tiger Thick. Why isn't it just called Tiger Whiskey? Or Thick Whiskey? Like, why can't it just be called Thick Whiskey? Like, just call it Thick Whiskey. Like, how is that so difficult to do? Because Tiger, obviously, is part of is his, is his son's name and he wanted to have a legacy so that when he grows up, his son will have his name blasted all over, flipping, bottle of... It's like, look, the name Tiger for a kid is fucking lame anyway. You know what I mean? You should be probably trying to keep that secret. But if you're going to put it on a bottle, I don't know, just call it Tiger Whiskey. Or call it thick whiskey but why is it called f tiger thick it just sounds like tiger thick come like that's the next thing that you want to kind of say and that's gross no one wants to do that 
unless you're Joe Rogan and you're forcing people on the show to do it, right? Remember that show where he forced, or not forced, it was like, it was like a challenge show and you had to drink like Tiger Cum or something. And it, I think that's the reason why he got taken off air, isn't it? That show that Joe Rogan did. But Jesus Christos, this is ridiculously terrible. But anyway, we move, we continue. This is a clip from 2017 that I think kind of shows you why some people were fans of Brendan. I think the next clip is going to show you that also. There was a time, again, it doesn't seem like it, but there was a time in history where Brendan was somebody you could kind of root for because essentially he'd always been a bit of a failure in terms of his sporting endeavours. He never quite made it in football. Well, he did lacrosse, I think. He never quite made it in football. He never quite made the heady heights he wanted to make in UFC because he actually going in there with a... He didn't actually go in there just to be a journeyman, to be fair to him. Brendan went into the UFC wanting to be champion. And if he couldn't be champion, he didn't want to compete. He didn't want to just be fighting for the sake of it just to collect a check. And I'm guessing because it's fucking brutal as well, right? Imagine being... Um, Oliveira and those kind of guys right you just fight for a check right and it's just like unless you like fighting or you love fighting it's probably difficult to get out of bed to get into fight camps to train to do such a thing so the, he kind of quits or he's forced to quit because of that you know you'd be surprised conversation he has with Joe Rogan you'd be surprised I think he'd fuck you up kind of thing right Joe Rogan then I feel like in my opinion I feel like he, he regretted that talk and he went out of his way to try and help Brendan to have a career outside of the UFC he let him appear on his show millions of times that's one thing Joe Rogan does really well if he wants to help you out he'll just get you on his show he'll shout you on Instagram he'll do what he can to get you on his platform so that you have the ability to make more money because he knows that show's powerful that show can get you to go from hero to zero I remember Lex Friedman going on Joe Rogan podcast and saying that how he was poor and he used to buy you know McDonald's burgers and just eat the patty to be keto because he didn't have any money then you know he gets on Joe Rogan podcast and now he's flipping doing this whole like you know the thing that he does at the moment so he's obviously being successful but there was a time in in his history where to be to be um to be a Brendan fan is sort of like to root for the underdog you kind of saw yourself through him a little bit because maybe you had struggled in your parts of your life you didn't quite make it you weren't always the one picked to go to the dance you know that sort of stuff right i think he had this really heartbreaking story about not getting a jersey like tiny tiny things like that and this is when he was a pretty decent person this clip is taken from 2017 where he was at the moon tower festival and i think this is when he was saying oh back you know i think he read in the caption on his instagram oh back in the day i wasn't booked at the moon tower and they only booked me under fighter and now they booked me under my name and i think at the time they booked him under fire because that's what he was more famously known for the fire and the kid it's not a bad thing to be booked under your podcast name but i guess you know if you've got goals maybe to get your name on there is probably a good thing so this is him talking to i guess to one of the presenters out there and look at how different and like Likeable, he sounds talking to this guy v some of the clips i've played of you of him recently never do that that's whatever right. with comedy it's like you know and it's not like i'm just in the shallow end touching the waters right, i'm at right. you know i'm at the moon tower festival right. and you know the comedy store and these yeah. huge theaters like you better have your act together man so <laughs> i'm working my tail off how much more likable did brendan come across in that little clip how much more personable how much more um just somebody you can legitimately root for and get behind did he come across in that clip vis-a-vis -vis who he is now so it leads me to two conclusions either he was always a douchebag and he just hid it well or over time the success and the money just corrupted his brain and he was a decent person before and then the, the money and success just corrupted him but then to say that it kind of it kind of it kind of is a it doesn't make sense because a lot of people say what's that adage people use they say like um money and power and influence they don't ex they don't make you a different person they just expose who you really are so maybe he always was a douchebag and then later on when he got the money he needed to afford him the opportunity not to suck anyone's dick he then turned into an absolute prick maybe that's the thing too because people do that often as well right they they have to go through a lot of struggle they maybe have to suck a lot of people's dicks off they maybe have to beg things and you know put up with a lot of shit and then when they get put in position they feel like they need to put that energy back out there to kind of get back at the people that they felt like kind of sunned them when they were coming up on their way up or something which is why some people i guess make such a big deal when they meet somebody who's very famous who's really nice because sometimes it doesn't usually happen that way 
right because you'd imagine all those times going to audition struggling trying to get yourself up there it will it, you know even if you're a decent person i can imagine what I, I can i can i can understand why it'll make you bitter but jesus christ this is terrible man but anyway let's continue um and then we've got another clip here from six years ago some of those posted on the final kids subreddit where brendan is sitting down with tom segura talking about the business of stand-up comedy and again Look how different Brendan is in terms of his demeanor, in terms of his comprehension, in terms of his ability to just sit there and listen and not interrupt. Even the way he sat down, he's very attentive, hands under the table. He's not assuming dominance. He's not doing that annoying hand thing. Now, don't get me wrong. Brendan always does this often anyway. From the, I remember from being a fan. He's somebody that clearly doesn't respect you or pay you any mind if you're not making money. If you're not richer than him, if you don't have more followers than him, more views or whatnot, he doesn't really care what you have to say. So then maybe, you know, listening to Tom talk was a bit of a, was him, his, his way of kind of respecting Tom's kind of bank account and Tom's ability to sell out venues and to do live shows and to have a successful podcast and his views are crazy, right? For the, your mum's house that he does with his wife, Christina P. Maybe that was a thing, but look at him. Look how different he is. And of course, Brian Cannon, man, he looks, you know, he looks both old and young but he definitely looks more fresh faced and alive than he does now he looks like a fucking scarecrow nowadays isn't it but yeah this is um tommy tom segura tommy buns basically explaining the business of stand-up to brendan who seems very attentive and very eager to learn yes. well like it's very true because i guess i don't understand the dynamics of stand-up so let, let's say you're just you're just an average comic and you go on the road How if you're headlining you right if you're headlining and you go on the road and you go on the road what people don't realize weekend. is that a lot of times they'll show up at a club and so let's say somebody you don't know you, you go into an improv club, 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 club. you gotta know the guy's name you show up at the club school and you're like oh this is getting paid right now nobody really understands the fact that maybe that guy that no one really knows he's not a famous guy he probably sold like maybe like maybe 30 people bought tickets to that show and then they discount sold 150 and then they gave away 150 because they just want to sell booze and food so everyone's like wow this guy's cool that comic's making 1200 bucks for, the for the whole weekend for the, from, from thursday yeah. do they pay Sunday. for his flight <sighs> is this a lack of self-awareness from comedians that they think making 1200 a weekend is not good money for telling an hours full of jokes let's calculate that right traveling there if you're traveling across country in a flight how i don't know i don't know the geography of america too well and how long flights take but let's say you live in like la and you've got a show in philly that's like what east coast right how long does a flight take you to get from la to philly five hours six hours if you want to do that on the car journey how long is that going to take you maybe double the amount maybe eight hours so maybe it's like half a day to drive up there so you maybe drive up there at the day before you book a shitty hotel for yourself or maybe they book a shitty hotel for you to stay in um you got your jokes done what else you need to do you food again maybe you can eat the food that they serve there in the bar if you want to save some money or maybe you bring your own food or whatever or you stay in an, an airbnb and you make some food there i don't know it's not going to cost too much you've already got your car to take you back and from the club etc i'd imagine performing at a club they're probably going to give you a rider to, you know so you can have drinks and shit so you have to spend too much money on alcohol if you are going to be drinking you can effectively if you need be if they're especially going to pay your flights even if you don't, so if you're driving there, right? No, if you're paying your flights, you can effectively still come home with the best part of a grand for a weekend of doing one hour jokes for what, three nights in a row, which might include, that might be like four hours of work per day, which might be like getting there, watching the show, setting up, whatever, right? Let's just, let's just assume it's four hours of work per day or four hours that you're kind of like, you're in the kind of the comedy club environment. You're not in your hotel room to make one twelve hundred a weekend that's pretty decent wage that would be what on four weeks that's like easily one two three four that's like easily like what six seven grand a week so a month that you're making from doing stand-up which doesn't include if you're smart you would have a little part-time job maybe a bit of freelancing maybe some contract work maybe some remote work that you can do off your laptop to supplement yourself you're laughing all that money you're making for stand-up you just put into your savings and you just live off the money that you do for your contracting or your part-time gig that's not too bad but again like the lack of self-awareness and 
um, the, the the kind of out of touch they are with the common man is just really interesting, man. Yes, they yeah, pay for his paper flight, flight and they'll put him up. But it's still like it's. And imagine if you're the guy doing set, like the middle guy, who's doing twenty minutes before him, you get six hundred bucks. Yeah, or you get be local. Or that's fuck traveling, right? Uh, <laughs> Nothing but every week did that, and so you just the only way you can survive is you have to run up debt to like to live. Yeah, because you're like, well, you're, you're in. It's interesting that he said fuck traveling, and even at that time, don't get me wrong, he was way more humble and way more of a way more of a nicer guy back then, and clearly he was listening and not doing the whole arrogant Brendan thing. But just imagine the confidence that you would have need to have to be like, oh fuck traveling. Because I'd imagine part of the reason why these sets are so important, these horrible sets that you do across country, these sets where you have to sit in your car for eight hours, you have to go on a shitty flight, like your your kind of budget airline where you're cramped in places and you don't have a seat and it's all annoying and shit, right? It looks like an episode of a, it looks like a scene of a soul plane or something. It's crazy in it. It's like a circus. The reason why you do that is so you can get on stage. So you can get stage time in front of a newer audience and make some money also, of course. But it's mostly to get stage time because you're going to have free shows in a weekend, back to back to back, sharpening your skills, maybe doing different sets, doing different jokes, doing different punchlines, changing this, changing that. So you're kind of going to run to your opportunity because it's a chance to get in front of people. I know for myself being a DJ, that's the same thing for me. I've There's been plenty of sets that I've kind of technically paid to play at where I've kind of, you know, put myself up, bought my own ticket, and maybe got refunded, you know, maybe got paid the equivalent of an Uber back home, which isn't anything, because, you know, I've, I've outlaid £150 to get there. But the reason why you do it is so that you can play in front of people, because you don't get an opportunity to play other places, and you hope also is that when you play in front of people, you can then take that into doing other things. What are people saying? You're breathing heavy into the mic. Okay, my bad, sorry, my bad, sorry, 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 sorry. Um, no audio, can you not hear me? Peter can say about the heavy breathing, but anyway, um, so the, the the point of doing all that is that so you can get in front of an audience, and that hopefully that getting in front of an audience, um, put away from the mic. Hold on one sec, just pull the mic away from your face or so just the audio. Okay, cool. How's that? Sorry, sorry about that, guys. Sorry about that. Heavy breathing. <laughs> um, that's a few days drive. What to get to? Um. To get to, uh, hold on, just pull the mic away from your face or just the audio. Okay, cool, I'll pull it away. Let's go back here. Leave us some air to breathe. <laughs> Jones, dude, leave us some air to, leave us some air. You're breathing like a buffalo in a mic. I'm sorry, mate. I'm really sorry. You're breathing mad hard in that mic, brother. I'm really sorry. All right, cool. This is much better. So uh, let's put it away from here. Um, yeah, I don't really get it, man. I don't understand. I really don't. But this obviously... Um... Okay, cool. You're, you're sound fine when you're talking, but it's when you're playing the video we can hear you breathing. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll mute myself when I play the video then. Last one and then... Or last couple of clips, I'll mute myself when I'm playing the video and I'll put it back on again. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but yeah, let's continue on. Um, then we've got this famous clip, if you guys remember this one, of Nate Diaz confronting Brendan. If some of you guys know T5K law better than me, could you tell me why Nate Diaz was so pissed off at Brendan in the first place? Did this have to do with Connor? What did this have to do? Did Brendan say something like Connor would bang Nate Diaz? Did he say Nate Diaz should retire? What was the reason why Nate Diaz wanted to confront Brendan in the first place? Please let me know in the comments. I'm going to mute myself now and play the video. <laughs> Remember your career, pussy. Oh my god. What happened here? Um let's go there. Let's turn the video down a bit as well. Okay, cool. Let me turn it down. 
I'm getting used to assuming what people are saying here. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, he denied saying he what he said. Yeah, he said Connor was going to bang him. Brennan was pretending that like Connor was going to win, doing his stitch. Um, Nate doing play. Okay, cool. But yeah, I love that man at the end of it. <laughs> but to be fair to Brendan, he didn't seem scared. Do you know what I mean? He didn't seem worried or anything. Clearly, because he thought maybe his old skill set could make sure that he would survive any sort of onslaught of a beef. And then we're going to end this with this last clip of this young lady who had a stand up set that I think revolved around getting at um, Chris D'Elia and a few other people within the LA comedy scene universe. Hopefully, you guys haven't seen this yet because I haven't myself. I've seen a um, watch this. So, just watch this and see what this lady has to say in terms of her impression of Brendan and Crystalia and stuff. And then this will be the end of Random Show episode number 24. It's been a mad one, isn't it? it took ages to get here, but hey, let's see. Let's go through it. Um, when did it happen? I'm not too sure, Christopher Keen. I don't know when that actually happened. I don't know. I think it might have happened around the time, obviously, when Mayweather fought um, Connor. So I don't know what year that was. Is that 2017? I don't know. Um, but yeah, let's um, let's watch this year, ladies. Her name is called Alice Hamilton. And um, she has some very not so nice things to say about some of the people that I featured on the random show. Um, I'm sure some of you guys will enjoy it. So let's play what she has to say. Alice Hamilton! Thank you guys for coming to this. Thank you. And give it up for Miranda and JP one more time. That was fucking awesome. I am way too ADHD to put something like this together. So thank you guys so much for everything that you did. Uh, thank you for coming to this. Uh, please don't heckle me. Like I know every single one of you personally. If any of you yells at me, I'll just be like, Zach, get the fuck out. <laughs> okay, so let's all be chill. Uh, yeah, so uh, Chris D'Elia got in trouble. <laughs> uh, Chris D'Elia getting in trouble is a lot like that clip of Kanye West interrupting Taylor Swift at the VMAs. Still funny. Uh, <laughs> if any of you guys don't know, Chris D'Elia is a terrible stand-up comedian who was accused of essentially trying to crowdsource child porn from his underage fans, whom he was also having sex with, allegedly, you know. <laughs> uh, and look, before we get into all of that, I just wanna say that Chris D'Elia is not funny at all. Like, <laughs> I don't give a fuck how many people laughed at his jokes. People used to laugh at blackface, okay? Sometimes the audience is wrong. <laughs> Yo, this lady is absolutely funny. You know how um, you know how refreshing it is to listen to somebody actually tell some actual jokes after listening to that ten-minute horrible disaster class of a comedy set from Brendan Schaub that I secretly recorded. This is actually funny. This is really funny. Her name is Alice Hamilton. Um, I think you should. Can you see the name there on the screen? I'll put it up there. That that's her name, and it's called. This is what the special is called. It's called Sex Criminal. Check it out, Alex Hamilton. It's really good, man. Really, really, really good. I really recommend it. Please um take a take note of it. Alex Hamilton. It's just uploaded the other day. Absolutely banging. I actually don't know why this came out, actually. What is this to do with? Is this to do with the, the Moontown Festival? Is this just a set she uploaded? But yeah, she went she went at it. She went at it. She's she's delivering the goods. Let's continue. And what struck me about like the day that Crystalia got canceled, a day that will live in infamy, is uh, the fact that like everyone defending him had such weak defenses. You know, they were like, it's legal to fuck high schoolers in Nevada. <laughs> if you have ever Googled age of consent laws by state, just go to your nearest prison and self-surrender. Uh, <laughs> All right, yeah, I know it's legal to fuck high schoolers in Nevada. Bestiality is legal in five states, but if Chris D'Elia fucked a cow, you wouldn't be like, well, hang on, was he in Kentucky? Because <laughs> if he was in Kentucky, then he technically didn't do anything wrong. So, I'm um, something of an intellectual. Uh, <laughs> 
God, it's just so fucking absurd to me. Like the idea that this man was accused of sticking his dick in people's kids and I'm supposed to give a fuck about which side of Lake Tahoe he was on. <laughs> like I True, and that's actually something that I think I must have been even guilty of at the time when it was all happening. Because, huh, how do you say this without sounding crass? Technically, technically you can't say what he did was against the law because i think the girl that he was contacting that was the one that was really sketch again if you if i had a daughter would i want chris Lee anywhere near my daughter no way shape or form get the fuck out of here if you're my friend you're dead to me bury under the joe if i see you in real life I might even punch you but as an observer from out the outside in that doesn't know anything to do with the guy i'm not having any responsibility not had any contact with him i don't give a shit about his life i'm not a diddler myself i don't care about you know flipping you know scoring the youngest girls and shit it's not something that's ever kind of tickled my fancy in that regard if anything I, you know the, the cackling sound and the screeching voices of girls that are under the age of 21 always annoys me so i've never understand this good thing that guys have where they desire to have the youngest girl possible that they can get a hold of i don't really get that but if we're being technical if we're being really just by the letter of the law he the thing that was sketchy was the one where he contacted the girl where she was um, she was underage and then she said I'm not I'm not legal yet and then he then contacted her the day after she got legal right that was really sketchy it's like okay you're not eight, seven you're not 18 yet but I can't wait until you're 18 like it's like I remember this this someone shared this this clip of this pastor somewhere or this preacher that was um hooking up with one of the um one of her uh one of his um churchgoers who happened to be like a young kid and i think the facebook poster was like the facebook post was like something like oh i'm so happy you're 18 now so we can be together like celebrating that she turned legal or something like sickening stuff that of course is obviously disgusting but i don't necessarily so that was obviously creepy and disgusting but is it really against the law to contact somebody when they're underage and then they say i'm not legal they say okay call cool, back away then come back later probably not and the fact that he's into younger girls is creepy and odd and really disturbing, maybe. But is it illegal? No, it's just an interest. It's just like a like. It's like when people like, I don't know. It's like girls that like older dudes because they've got money. Maybe you like younger girls because I don't want to say why because it's nasty. But you get what I mean, innit? You get what I mean. I just fucking don't. Uh, people were like, look, some of the high schoolers wanted to fuck Dalia. And I'm like, I know but wanting to fuck Chris D'Elia is actually a sign that you're not mature enough for sex. <laughs> Bitch, I don't care if you're 30, you not ready, okay? <laughs> People were like, well, maybe he didn't know that the girls DMing him were in high school. And I'm like, yeah, if you're Justin Bieber's favorite comedian, then you do know you're gonna get DM'd by a bunch of high schoolers. Don't fuck any of them. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, this whole thing is Bieber's fault for having shitty taste in comedy. <laughs> All right, and you know what? Just in case anyone does think that Dalia didn't know what he was doing was wrong, in 2010, he tweeted, having sex with a minor is wrong. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fuck that dude. People have these shittiest defenses. They're like, technically, he's not a pedophile. He's actually an amphibophile. That shit had me feeling like the bitch for Mean Girls. I'm like, stop trying to make a fibophile happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> People were like, you know, teenage girls, their brains are still developing, but their bodies are mature. Ew. Um, <laughs> gross. Uh, two things. One, that underdeveloped brain is the thing you're damaging the most when you assault a minor. And second, I don't give a fuck how big a pair of titties a high school girl has. Leave her alone. Um, <laughs> fucking gross dude uh, i don't know if any of you guys saw that insane apology video that delia posted on youtube one of the most unhinged things i've ever seen in my fucking life he just kept saying all of my relationships were consensual and legal and i'm like yeah the word legal is doing a lot of the heavy lifting in that <laughs> sentence he apologized for cheating i'm like no one is upset at you for cheating because nobody thought you were faithful um <laughs> There's, there's rumor that Chris, Chris D'Elia was swiping on Tinder in the back of the Laugh Factory the night his son was born. We know you're a cheater, okay? No one gives a shit. Uh, like
Boo! Okay, there we go. We're back, 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 back. So, um, what I was saying, actually, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll start doing it differently. What I was saying was like, I feel like for whatever reason, it's okay to go up in relationships. So if you're somebody that's like 20 something or 30 something and you're dating somebody that's like 10 years, 20 years, you're old, you're senior, people don't really look at you that or weirdly. It's not really something that's kind of like, um, it's not like something that's looked down upon societally, but it, in society, sorry. But if you're somebody who is 60, 50 and you're dating somebody who's 25, 24, 23, 22, 19, 18, that's when it starts to get a bit weird. And I've, I don't really understand why that is the case. If anything, people should be grossed out either way, either when it's going down or whether it's going up, especially when it's something that happens to be like a kink, something that you look for, like you're looking for people who are younger. You're not just dating people because, you know, you have a connection with them or you like them or whatnot. No, it's just because they're of their age mostly. It's just a bit strange, you know, of a, of a thing to have, of an interest. Like I'm only dating you because of your age. It's like, oof, I don't know, brother. That sounds a bit mad, isn't it? That sounds a bit insane, but maybe, maybe you're looking too deep into it. I don't really know. Anyway, let's play. It's so fucking stupid. It's clearly, it's clear that his like plan was if I call myself a cheater, maybe everyone else will stop calling me a pedophile. And it's like, no, I'm gonna still do it though. <laughs> like, are you seriously trying to imply that Netflix edited your ass out a whole movie because they found out you were unfaithful to the random woman you accidentally got pregnant? Like, I'm <laughs> not fucking stupid. You know, Oof, this lady really hates Crystal Lee, isn't it? <laughs> like, you got dropped by your agents. You don't get dropped by your agents for cheating. Are you trying to tell me that CAA, the agency that represents Mel Gibson, found out that you cheated, called you up, and was like, I thought you were a good man? <laughs> Fuck out of here. She's funny, though. She's fucking funny. <laughs> He was like, uh, he, in that stupid video, he was like, I, I just don't know what's wrong with having sex with somebody that wants to have sex with you. I'm like, well, does she have school in the morning? Because <laughs> if she does, that's what's wrong. God, I, I can't get mad at Chris D'Elia for lying because if he tells the truth, he'll go to prison. So I, I guess I can just get mad at all the people who believe the bullshit in that stupid video. Because, like, uh, some people that I, I, I once respected saw that video and then were like, I hope Chris D'Elia gets the help he needs. I'm like, that is not what you're supposed to hope. Okay, you're supposed to hope that the victims get his home address and then go to his house and kill him and his entire family. Jesus Christ. Okay, I hope that they drop kick his baby into a hot tub. <laughs> Just someone said here, what is it? Um, what did it say? Uh, uh, I agree because, yeah, was it? Um, Faisal El Haji said, I agree with her. I hate Chris more because he's unfunny hack. Be honest, guys. Like, <laughs> I don't mind Chris's stand up, but one thing that was clear because I think I got introduced to Chris D'Elia through podcasting first, then I listened to his stand up comedy. I think he is way funnier as a podcaster then he is a stand-up like it's not even close and then when he gets on stage if you know some of you guys have seen he has that weird voice inflection thing that he does or that weird voice in general he has this weird like kind of baby kiddie voice and he does this weird um he kind of like does this weird walk where he kind of walks like you know a duck like i i, I don't i didn't really understand that i don't really get where where that's from I don't find that to be funny at all. But on podcasts, he's hilarious. Like, there's so many clips of his... Like, think about the clips of him on podcasts that are in the millions of views. Like, the um, oops and um, whatever, all that, you know... Um, yeah, all that stuff with, um, you know, with flipping Will Sasser and all them guys, right? And, and, and Brian Callen. Those clips are in the hundreds of thousands, if not the millions, in terms of views. Because they're really hilarious, those clips. But you're not really going to have the same energy for a stand-up comedy are you it's like mm, not really so i get it in some sense but but then oddly enough everybody in that la comedy scene when he was around popping they would always say he crushed he's amazing life which i'm probably sure he was because of how physical he is and how dorky he looks on stage i can understand why that would be funny but i never got it 
I never understood why people thought this guy was like, okay, he's the best because you listen to one Bill Burr set and you're like, no, this guy's clearly better. Or you listen to a Sebastian Man- Manasalco who I think is like the better version of what Chris Elia does in terms of physicality and being dorky on stage. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think we can end that lineage. Um, <laughs> I'm fucking kidding. All right. You know what? Uh, actually, I'm not kidding. Uh, if you were offended by that joke, I just have one thing to say. I'm not sorry for any joke that I've ever told in my entire life. I don't give a fuck what you think about it. Figure your own shit out if your feelings are hurt. I'm not sure I understand the, the point of bringing up someone's tweets on stage as part of your joke thing, though. That sounds a bit weird. Holding somebody to their tweets is a little bit lame, especially if you're a stand-up comedian. You're meant to be able to say what the fuck you want. You're meant to actually be funny on on your Twitter feed as well, right? You're not meant to sit on there being making political statements or, you know, advocating for a political party or whatever nonsense. You know? I mean, you're meant to be on there telling jokes. You're meant to be on there trying to take people away, trying to take people's attention away from the horrors of everyday life, not reminding them that you're also aware of what's going on in Ukraine. No one's tuning into you for that. So I don't really see the tweet thing as being a... Sm- I don't really get that, but hey... Uh, I'm kidding. I want to apologize for that last joke. Um, That shit was way over the line. That was completely uncalled for. (laughs) Leave leave the kid alone, all right? It's not his fault that his dad is allegedly, but I'm pretty sure a pedophile. Um, (laughs) Fuck. Satire requires clarity, lest it contribute to the thing it's trying to criticize. So let me be clear, leave the kid alone, okay? Jesus Christ. That Chris Leah, he's always on Instagram, like using his son as a human shield. Like, look at me, you guys. I'm just a father. I'm like, use some other things too, though. I, I, I forget about all that other stuff, man. This lady's good. This lady's God. good. <laughs> I am anti gun, which is why I'm going to shoot Chris Leah in the chest with a crossbow. Um, Yo, this is brutal. She is absolutely going for it with an axe. She's kicking down his door, kicking his kid out of the window, strangling his wife with one hand and then flipping, slashing Chris over the face with his with an axe with another hand while she cackles and talks to her friend on her earpods. Like she is not having it. It's gonna take him 55 minutes to die. That's plenty of time to think of all your mistakes. Uh, I'm kidding, leave him alone. Actually, I have some really good reasons why nobody should hurt Chris D'Elia, his kid, his family, any of them, all right? Uh, because due process can't do anything about guys like D'Elia, Chris D'Elia's punishment is gonna be a two-parter. Uh, the first part was hilariously losing his entire career on Twitter. The second part is gonna be when his son grows up, finds the Wikipedia page, and then immediately and permanently loses all respect. (laughs) Once that kid types his dad's name into Google, Chris D'Elia ain't gonna be able to tell him shit. Like, uh, hey son, I I think you shouldn't play so many video games. You shouldn't have fucked so many teenagers, dad, but you did it though. Get the fuck out of my room, pedophile. You know? (laughs) That's actually just how all rich white boys speak to their fathers. (laughs) I get the fuck out of my room, pedophile. And the dad is like, I'm a judge, Connor. You know, like, <laughs> God, uh, I cannot wait. Like, you can't hurt Chris and his family. Like, I can't wait until that kid gets older and then brings home his first girlfriend. You know, like, hey, dad, this is Emma. And oh, you don't have to hug her, dad. <laughs> <laughs> no handshakes, no high fives. You don't have to touch her at all. Uh, Actually, we're not even staying. I'm just getting my stuff. We're going to go see a movie. I would ask you for a ride to the movie theater, but Emma's mom says that she's not allowed to get in the car with you. Jesus Christ. She's going to tie my jumper up to the back of her bicycle. She can pull me on my skateboard. (laughs) Got to leave now because the movie starts in three hours. I have hated Chris D'Elia for so fucking long. Ever since I saw his first Comedy Central Presents, like I distinctly remember my sister being like, can you turn this off? Like... And I was like, yeah, this dude fucking sucks. <laughs> no pain came out. It was April of 2020. We're in the pandemic. I had nothing better to do. So I just like lit a joint and turned it on with an open mind. And I actually laughed at a bunch of the jokes. I couldn't fucking believe it. I, I, I turned that shit off halfway through and just sat there. I was like, oh my God, I hate this dude so much. And it's not his jokes. Like, 
I hate this dude and it's personal. <laughs> I swear to God, like, I sat there kind of feeling like a bad person. I was like, why do you hate this dude so much? Like, you don't have a good reason to feel so strongly about this motherfucker. I tried to stop hating him for, like, five minutes, and I couldn't. <laughs> After five minutes, I just had to go on black. I don't really like this guy. Uh, and then he got in trouble, but he's not the only one who got in trouble, so let's talk about the rest of them. Jesus Christ. Love her. I love her. She's fucking going for it. Got in trouble. Louis C.K. was a big one. Uh, I remember when he got in trouble because all of my guy friends were like, uh, that is terrible. Because he was my favorite comedian. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's why it sucks. Uh, <laughs> God, they didn't let Louis C.K. do the voice of the dog in The Secret Life of Pets 2. And I was like, come on. Dogs have been masturbating in front of unwilling participants since the dawn of time. Okay, <laughs> how are you going to take away the role my man was born to play? <laughs> I think that, like, a lot of confusion happens because some guys don't realize that, like, you're supposed to be naked with someone. Uh, you are not supposed to be naked at someone. <laughs> That's uh, an important difference there. Uh, but to be again, maybe I I'm misremembering the story. But if we, if we, if the if we if if we take the accounts of the actual women who were involved in this situation to be true, or if we believe what they said, I remember them saying at the time that they consented to Louis C.K. doing it. Like he never just got out of the blue and just pulled his dick out and just did it without us ask, without asking. It was something that I think even was it Sarah, Sarah Silverman said Louis C.K. asked her once to jack off in front of her. And she said, yeah, whatever, you can do what you want as long as you don't touch me. And he did it and he jacked off and he whatever, he finished and they continued on. It's just a kink that he had, I guess. Um, it's strange, it's weird. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not really a fan or a believer of trying to hook up with people in your industry or your peer group. I think it just leads to problems that you don't need to have. But it's not like he did it unwillingly. He's not, no, it's not like he did it without permission. He always kind of asks again. It's creepy, don't get me wrong, but he still asks like a normal human. They said no, and he would then say, okay, cool, and continue. So I think these women, if I'm not mistaken, he said they said yes, then they changed their mind after the fact, which they're allowed to do, fair enough. But I don't think it was a, fa a thing of him just jumping out of, the, out, of the, out of the room or behind the plant and just saying, hey, my dick's out. Do you know what I mean? He definitely asked, but then it's still... It's like if that's your favorite comedian and you hear that he likes to just stand in front of women and just jack off. <laughs> it's hard to look at him the same way, isn't it? And to be a fan of him. And again, it's a kink. We all have our kinks that, you know, they're private. You don't need to be revealing them to anybody. But when they're made public, it can be a bit hard to look at the person the same way again, isn't it? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, when uh, Louis C.K. got cancelled, uh, a bunch of people were saying, like, you can't get rid of his career, he's a comedy genius, we need his input on, like, culture. And I just want to say that that argument does not apply to Crystal <laughs> We can easily afford to lose that guy. <laughs> we do not need him around at all. Uh, Brad Williams did not get accused of anything, he rat. So let's quickly say, I think um, what people are saying on the thing, um, Dash X, um, he's saying, I remember, I'm trying to remember, but it wasn't an employee assistant dynamic. No, if I'm not mistaken, the Louis C.K. one, they were two up and coming comedians themselves. I'm pretty sure they had a podcast or something. Two women who we kind of knew. Maybe they were openers for him, whatever, but they were definitely comedians. And like I said, he, he already did it to Sarah Silverman. She said in a podcast or a show an interview that he, Louis C.K. once requested, hey, can I wank in front of you? And she said, yeah. So it's clearly a thing that he was known to do. It's just that in this case, I guess the women maybe after the fact felt uncomfortable. Maybe it was one of those things where at the time he was asking to wank in front of them, maybe they were working on something. And if you're a woman and somebody's in business with you and you're trying to keep them sweet so that they can give you a job so that you can pay your bill and put your kid through school and then they ask you for a sexual favor, it can be a very uncomfortable position to be in because you feel as if like, oh, if I don't do this, he's going to fire me and then I won't be able to pay my bills. Do you know what I mean? So you're put in a weird predicament. So maybe that was the reason why it was a bit of a mad thing. But in general, like I said, across the board, just don't 
fuck your peers. Don't fuck your industry peeps. Don't fuck people in the same industry. I just don't think it's worth it. Unless you, unless it's like a Tom Segura, Christina P thing where you end up meeting your soulmate and your life partner and the mother of your children, cool. But for the most part, if you're going to hook up with people, just hook up with your fans, man. There's plenty of them of age that are willing to come on that stage and suck you off in front of a group of people. Like, there's plenty of people that arrive there probably with their boyfriends that are ready to ditch them just to hook up with you. Why would you need to go and destroy the sanctity of your little scene that you have going on or make it awkward when you come into a room or have people have to decide who to want to be friends with based on who it just doesn't make any sense i just don't think it's person i just don't think it's worth it added himself out brad williams was on a podcast and they were like tell me a crazy story from your days on the road and the story brad williams chose to tell was that he was opening for Carlos Mencia. Some chick blew the tour bus driver to try to get in the tour bus so she could fuck Carlos Mencia. And then Carlos, as a prank, got her in the bedroom, got all her clothes off, told her to wait right here, turn the lights down, and then sent Brad Williams in to rape her. Good one. A hilarious gag from two titans of comedy. Brad Williams' big defense for him. And she's right as well. That was a mad story that he shared. I don't know. Maybe it's podcasting because you want to, when you're drunk or you're trying to make people laugh and you want to make them entertained. I did not believe my ears when I heard that story. Like, it's crazy. So this girl wants to fuck Carlos Mencia. They, he leads her on that they're going to hook up. He turns off the lights and says, I'm going to come back. And then Brad Williams sneaks in and fucks her instead. Supposedly she continued anyway, I think, and she realized what well, it was him. It wasn't him anyway. But Jesus Christ, mate, that is basically rape. <laughs> That's basically rape. That isn't not like what what else is that? Like just jumping into somebody's bed. That's like equivalent to the the Joey Diaz story. Again, I love Joey Diaz, but that story Joey Diaz shared on a podcast where he said allegedly like he jumped he um he hopped in a woman's window or something, a neighbor or something and and, and, and started to eat her out when she was sleeping. Do you remember that story? Ages ago, back in the day on the podcast, I... <sighs> ...himself was that the story was fake because no victim ever came forward. I'm like, she's probably dead. Um, I know I would be. <laughs> if that shit happened to me, I'd... Oh, yeah. Um, who's asking about Schultz? Um, is it Corky Vanderhaven? If I'm not mistaken, Schultz's accusations was from an ex-girlfriend that he had. Uh, long-term girlfriend i think the one before he met his wife she so basically alleged abuse so basically he was just being rude and a bit of a dickhead and i think there might have been some physical altercations involved there and she i think wrote a song about it or something she's a musician i don't know what it was but i remember covering it ages ago about it um but it wasn't that deep i don't think so i don't think so um what people saying here, when his special came out, apparently people were bugging his ex and he snapped and revealed that in a sheer taunt for men of abuse, he pulled up with her splitting the face because there's too much to make up here. Yeah, yeah, cool. Then let's continue. Clear a beer bong full of Drano in five seconds. Oh, yeah, yeah. True, 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 true. That's I remember. Dash X says, yeah, he would, um, he, he got back at her by cleaning his shoes with her toothbrush that she brushed her teeth with and he didn't tell her. <laughs> That's some fucked up for shit, but again, I don't know if that counts as you being a piece of shit, you know what I mean? Seconds. Fuck out of here. That bitch killed herself, went to heaven, told God what happened, and then God was like, don't worry, girl, I got you. I'm gonna meet to Brad Williams on the day his daughter is born. Jesus Christ. Uh, Aziz Ansari, that was controversial, but what no one is really talking about is the fact that like he was 35 and she was 22. I feel like if you were to run back that whole date with a woman who was the same age as Aziz, he would not have gotten me to. Like a 35 year old woman is not gonna be like, Aziz was pressuring me to blow him and then I got sad and I didn't want to and now I'm telling my story. You know, like <laughs> a 35 year old woman is just gonna be like, hey Aziz, I've been sucking your dick for a couple of minutes now, but I actually just changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> you, you didn't notice because your head was back and your eyes were closed, but I already called an Uber. I'm going to leave now, and that is the last you will hear from that bitch, okay? You can't go on a date with a 22-year-old and then turn around like, she embarrassed me in public. That's what they do. <laughs> I'm not going to waste any time talking about Joey Diaz because he'll be dead in a week. Jesus Christ. 
Eliza Schlesinger. Uh, she didn't meet to anyone, but did you guys know that in one of her early specials she uses the N-word? <laughs> there are some white people who use the N-word with this energy, you know, this now is my chance energy <laughs> that I do not fuck with <laughs> at all. <laughs> Speaking of using the N-word, Neil Brennan. Uh, Neil Brennan used to use the N-word a lot, but I'm not gonna give him any shit for it because I'm only half black. And I don't think that uh, I have the authority to tell Dave Chappelle's white friend whether or not he can say nigga. <laughs> like, I can tell Eliza whatever I want, you know? <laughs> I can fucking lay into Eliza, but if I tell Neil no and then Dave says it's fine, I think I've been overruled. <laughs> Um, here is my impression of Neil Brennan on his podcast talking about women. These gold-digging attention whores yeah. deserve equal pay. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, whose side are you on? <laughs> Should listen to the podcast How Neil Feel if you want to watch a grown-ass man stick one foot on being an ally to women and another foot being a toxic man and then desperately try to keep his balance like a goddamn baby giraffe. <laughs> Chris Rock said that he thinks that rape would be less frequent if women wouldn't drink or hang out around drunk men. And a lot of people believe that. I used to believe that. Jesus so Christ. let's break it down. If women can't hang out around drunk guys, that means women can't go to bars, clubs, concerts, college. Uh, raves, music festivals, most weddings, some funerals, fucking Applebee's. <laughs> but let's say that women actually did stop going to all of those places. Like, what do you think rapists are gonna do? Just get out the game? <laughs> no, they're gonna go to wherever it is your female friends are drinking and then we're right back to square one. Brendan Schaub is a fucking idiot. <laughs> I don't know if this happens to anyone else, but whenever I picture Brendan Schaub in my mind, his eyes are crossed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever, <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever heard Brendan Schaub speak, but he has the perfect voice for how dumb he is. <laughs> I saw him doing stand up and I was like, what the fuck is he doing? But then I remembered he used to do martial arts and he's been punched in the head a thousand times. And I was like, oh, he's doing his best. <laughs> Brendan Schaub's next comedy album is going to be called My Wife is Mexican and I Hate Her Guts. <laughs> uh, Andrew Santino, that fucking gay slur. <laughs> you, can only <laughs> you can only use homophobic language if you're gay. I see Andrew Santino and I'm like, hang on, I'm going to go fuck a woman and when I get back, I'm going to describe your behavior. <laughs> Andrew Santino has this joke where uh, he says that black men can't marry white women because white women are too petite and dainty. He says black men have to marry black women, like big, strong, tough black women so that they give birth to big, strong, tough professional athletes. Jesus I'm Christ. Like, when you're talking about breeding black people for physical prowess, how you don't feel like a slave owner, dude? <laughs> Like, that shit happened to one of my ancestors. The last person in my family to be a slave had 500 kids. Jesus. But some of my relatives try to say that we're, like, distantly related to Kobe Bryant. I'm like, 500 kids? We are related to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm out here dating a white guy because all of these niggas is my cousin. <laughs> uh, Whitney Cummings. I love it when white women dye their hair blue as a cry for help. Um, <laughs> I wanted to have a part in this show where I was like Bobby Lee, you know, like all menacingly, but then I was just gonna go like, I love him and I hope he's having a nice day and then move on to shitting on other comics. But uh, then you hear about Bobby Lee and it's like, God damn, you cannot get past at the comedy store until you at least bite a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you guys have been to the comedy store, you know, like they have the wall with all the comedians' names on it. Like, as you're walking in, you can literally just go, one, two, three. This one punched a lady. Like, <laughs> every few months, somebody takes a sledgehammer and destroys Donald Trump's star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, which if you haven't seen it, it's right next to Kevin Spacey. The comedy store better pray that no one starts sledgehammering the names of sexual predators or else the walls of that building would look like fucking Swiss cheese. <laughs> it was wild because like a lot of comics were defending Chris D'Elia. It's weird with these free speech comics because like when it comes to rape jokes, they're like, I can say whatever I want whenever I want and if you don't like it, that's your problem. 
But when it comes to rape accusations, they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you saying the the comedian who punched a woman was Joe Rogan dash X? When did Joe Rogan punch a punch a woman? Jesus Christ, I don't, I didn't know about that. What's up, Andrew? Once once Red Bar's back, Santino's finished. Oh, yeah, shit. Do you remember the way Red Bar was going at Santino? Because I think he got some woman who allegedly was hooking up with Santino. She messaged in and basically spilled all the gossip about him and how he conducts him. I think I had to tune out because I'm not very comfortable with hearing people, you know, creep on people on DMs and stuff via... Po it's just, it, just, it just makes me feel uneasy because I can I, I can only imagine if somebody revealed my, my DMs. I'd be fucking distraught. So I couldn't do it, but Red Bar absolutely went after Santino, man. Absolutely ripped into him. Um, to the point where, did Santino threaten him also with legal action, or am I, or am I mistaken? Did Santino even French him? I don't know. But, or maybe he threatened to kind of meet up with him, because aren't they from the same place? Isn't Santino from Chicago too? Maybe. Um, but yeah, she talks about it, of course. Yep, I, I can DM you the pod. She talks about it, crushed her windpipe, and Mitzi saved her from Tim to jail. <gasps> oh my god. All right. So, we're, need to, we're 20 minutes in. I don't want to watch the entire thing. There's only eight minutes left, but I don't want to watch the whole thing because I want to end it now and get on to other, other things. But yeah, this has been the. This has been a good one. It kind of finally worked. It actually finally, 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 finally worked. Um. And I'm absolutely over the moon that this happened. I really am because I was really worried for a bit. So God almighty, man. Thank God. Thank God. So yeah, big up everyone that tuned in to the Random Show episode number 24. It's been an absolute pleasure. We finally got there in the end and got through all the topics I wanted to talk about. Next time when I come on, I'm going to use the same setup again. So you'll see some tweaks here and there from what I do and stuff. But this is what I'm going to be doing going forward. So thank you again for everyone that's tuned in. Um, if it's the first time checking out my channel and you like what you see, please smash that like button. That will be greatly appreciated. If you want to see more stuff regarding myself, you want to see my podcast or that sort of stuff, then why not subscribe to my channel? That will be greatly appreciated. I'm going to start doing more um, of this stuff and covering a bit more over the, over the next few weeks and whatnot. Um, obviously the live streams are obviously there um, and yeah man it's been a pleasure it really has it's been fun it's been good thank you so much for um, hanging in there with me it's, I know it was bad before I'm going to try and prepare beforehand also to make sure this is tight and not messed up and yeah man we're going to have a good time doing this shit innit? we're going to have a good time so thank you once again honestly I really appreciate you guys for hanging in there with me it was a real fun time and I'll see you guys again very very soon <laughs> yeah you'll be cut that shit together yeah thanks be cut for your encouraging words man it's been really cool um, and I'll see you guys very very soon man thanks again for checking me out peace out man <laughs>